be able to do work with people with dementia. And initially, the, the initial grant um, with Santander was to have people coming out to us. Um, and it was really, really good, really, really useful. And we, we applied twice because if you apply and you don't get it, and you don't hear within the six weeks, then you can reapply. And that's the good thing about it. With a lot of the grants, I mean, like Kim was saying, A, you have to write masses. Also, if you don't get it, you can't reapply. Um, the thing about this one is the fact that you can. So as a result of that, um, we reapplied. And what we had to think about is the wording. Because it's quite right, on the actual leaflet, it's only a small bit of space. And what you have to think about is exactly how to word it. So it's really good because there's not much to write, but you have to think about how you make it apply to the various, you know, the possibilities. Um, so Out of the Dementia was looking at um, really helping people sort of just spend time with the ponies because we work at Bodster. Um, we're in the EQ Centre down in Sandford. And it was just by being with the ponies, how it would help them relax, how it would help them be calm. Um, and so forth. That aspect worked really well. The problem we found, in fact, was that for a lot of people with dementia, actually getting to us was difficult. So what we actually did was, as a result of applying for that, we then took it on and we applied for an awards for all grant. And we got an awards for all grant. That took a lot more writing. <laughs> um, but it meant that we could start taking ponies actually to care homes and um, dementia homes, and as a result of it, we worked with Innovations for Dementia and actually produced um, a little booklet. And it's amazing. We want to leave a couple of these booklets with you because you actually helped us start this all off. Um, and it's amazing just the photographs that show what being the pony coming and visiting them in the care homes just does. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, as a result of that, we actually got invited to apply for the People's Project, hence this. Um, <laughs> so we are one of five finalists in the People's Project. Um, we have voting going on at the moment. We need people on the island to vote for us. Um, we've only got till Monday. Uh, we're up against f four mainland um, charities, all very good charities. Uh, one in Portsmouth, working with an art therapy sort of session for people, refugees, asylum seekers. Two in Brighton, one doing a cookery project, and one working with um, hidden disabilities, which is again quite an interesting aspect, because they're looking at social stories for that, which is really good. And one in Bournemouth that's trying to get um, people that are disabled and unemployed to get into setting up their own businesses. But we're the only one on the island, we're the only one to do with ponies and dementia, and what we really, really need is people to vote for us. So I'm afraid we are plugging that. And if it's okay by you, we would like to give you one of these because it's a very simple process. And all you have to do, you just Google Bodster. And if you click on, if you go on to Bodster, there's a little film. And I would be amazed if people aren't inspired by that film because it really does show you what we do. And for example, we've been out trying to promote, we went to St. Mary's Hospital yesterday and actually went into the, uh, what's it called? Seven Acres. Seven acres. And, and it was amazing because we then... should have brought Tippy here actually because <laughs> she probably would have coped perfectly happily here because she went into the actual place and stood there and she was as calm as anything. And it was fascinating watching the smiles coming on people's faces. And we also met a lady who had a stroke who is blind and she could, you could see her reaching out and then she suddenly found Tippy and oh, it is quite emotional a lot of it. Um, so if it's okay by you, we would really like you to possibly vote for us and to, if possible, get some other people to vote for us because it would be amazing if we can carry this on because what we need is the funds to be able to develop it to also involve more volunteers because that's the other thing with Santander is it was to try and get people involved in the project, very much making it more of a community project. We need the funds to do that because what we want to be able to do is have volunteers come with us take photographs in the homes, be able to print those photographs straight away, talk to the people there, so that that experience can be continued on. So they can, you know, it doesn't matter if they don't remember the pony or whatever, but if they've got a photograph, the person visiting them can say, oh, what's this? And then actually it will prolong it. And also, the experience, it will also help the younger people to then engage with older people and see that just because you're in a care home, or just because you've got dementia, 
that's not the end. You know, there's a lot that you can you know, help experience and the love of the horses. You know what it's like, you put a pony here, which as I say, I should have brought it with me. Because if I had the pony here, you'd all be stroking it and <laughs> it'd make it much easier talking. So if it's okay there you, we'd like you to please vote and try and get other people to vote if possible. Um, but we've also been amazingly lucky because you can reapply after two years. And we reapplied um, this year. And in fact, this time, we really use this um, branch because Simone um, rang us up. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry yeah. yeah, and said, "What exactly are you wanting to do? And can I have a bit more detail?" So that's the nice thing that they will support you in, you know, developing it. So us, the second um, application is to work with people with mental health issues and depression, and to help them through gaining a qualification. Um, we use. Open College Network qualifications, um, working with the horses and gaining confidence. Because a lot of people that have depression, something's happened to them. Um, and we've worked with a lot of people that, for example, have been you know, primary school teachers or doing um, as a graphic design lady. Um, and then just something happened and it all fell to pieces. And she now felt that she couldn't do anything. So what we do is we offer the opportunity to work with the ponies and the ponies don't judge, they take you as they are, they're just there for you. Um, so she could, for example, spend time with them and learn skills with them and have the pony, we do loose work, we use natural horsemanship, so have the pony come and walk, walk, walk with her loose and be with her. So you can see the confidence that that helped her gain. And as a result, we can think about target setting. So what we do is we do the qualification, developing confidence and self-awareness, is putting together a portfolio Again, not an exam, just to sort of put in together experiences. And it helps them think about target setting because with ponies, it works best if you take things slowly, step by step. So again, they can apply that to their own lives and think about, right, I want to get back into work. I can't even go on a bus. Or I can't even talk to a group of people, let alone go for a, an, an, an interview. Okay, well, perhaps just talk with me, with the pony. So they, again, see how they can gain confidence by step by step. But the big thing that we found the second time we applied was so much easier because we actually had the support <laughs> of Santander and it was just amazing um, because you know you could actually talk some of things through because sometimes when you're faced with a small box like that it's actually thinking about how to put it in the right words and what was nice the second time round was actually we said so last time we applied we didn't get it the first time so if we don't hear back within six weeks we're going to have to reapply aren't we? And amazingly enough, you said that, actually, no, don't worry, I'll just get back to you if I need to, but I'll keep yeah. applying till you get it. So that was really, really amazing. <laughs> when you think, that's my bit. Yeah, when you think <laughs> of this, in order to get to this point with this, we had to, A, be invited, and hundreds of projects were invited, then we had to put in an application, then we had to be selected again, and then we had to put in the more detailed um, a bid with a whole load of photographs and then a more detailed bid with um, funding and exactly what we were going to spend the money on and then we finally got to this point where we're now campaigning for two weeks and it's exhausting so this project <laughs> is a lot easier to do <laughs> and it's amazing to have the support thank you so would it be okay if i gave you one of these absolutely yeah. Please. I'll add one. A link for the branch. I've been leaving them out on the bus while I was late. Just go onto the website. Just Google. It's a very simple exercise, but it'd be really kind if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. I love white dot live. Yeah. I thought you got this. I love white dot live. All one word. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the funds for the actual that we gave for Santander, they pay for um, they pay for our staff. So that's what we had to think about: is what to put, what to apply for. So it paid for part-time staffing. Um, with, the, with the dementia one, it was paying for. Gaining so sensory garden, um, so again, gaining um, the plants um, and that sort of thing. So again, you have to think about what you're actually going to apply for. 
um, because you can't apply for the full time staff well funds, but you can if say that you're going to have someone coming in to do some part time funding. Um, I will be talking but about yeah, that in more detail quite anyway. So yeah. thank, thank you very much. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing very well, thank you very much. We're almost done talking at you, but I'm yeah, hoping this has all been valuable to you and it's it's helping. Um, we also uh, just now have Chris. Yep. Oh, me. Stop texting Chris. <laughs> he's not, he's sharing the live stream. <laughs> um, Chris is going to come and talk about something that I'm very excited about because I didn't know this was even possible. He's going to talk about how to get free Google advertising for your charity. Is that right? Well, I hope so, yes. Hope so. So there we go. Thank you, um, Good evening, everybody. Um, I specialise in helping companies get found online. So that's either through websites, through SEO, search engine optimization, that is, sorry. Um, social advertising, so the adverts you see pop up on social media. Um, advertising on Google, I do a lot of advertising on Google, and through that is um, Google AdWords. Is anyone familiar with Google AdWords at all? No. Okay, so if you go onto Google and you uh, do a search for anything on you know, like plumber or plumber or any sort of, you see that the, the first four or five or six things that come up are adverts. Mm -hmm. So before you get what they call the organic results, and we might get a map with some results on that, above all of that would be four or five, maybe up to six, that have a little tiny ad next to it. And people are paying for that. Well, they don't, they don't pay at that point, but they'll, they'll have an auction, a good will have an auction, and it'll put those adverts up there. And when you click on one of those adverts, that company then pays for it. That's Google AdWords. Um, I work with companies to get their adverts up there so they look good and you'll they match what you're searching for and people click on it. Um, what generally isn't known is that that facility is available to charities for free. Um, there are some caveats around that. So there is, a, there is a potentially a possibility, and it's not that difficult to get, for your individual charities to get what is called a Google grant. And what that lets you do is place your adverts in for certain search phrases in those top results that come up. Um, there are a few caveats around that, but the, the amount of money they, they give you, they don't actually give you cash, but they credit your account, is $10,000 a month. Um, and if you spend that $10,000 a month, they'll up that to $40,000 a month. So I work for a couple of charities in Portsmouth, and they spend $40,000 a month, nearly half a million dollars every year with Google advertising for free. They get this for free. The only caveat they've got is quite a complicated big account, my help from manager. Um, so it's a, it's a good opportunity, it's not too arduous to apply for it, but it's a good opportunity for you to, um, so for example, your folk bodster, to actually use Google AdWords if people start typing in anything to do with you, you have to set it up, anything to do with your search terms, you, will, you can start appearing at the top of Google. There's a slight caveat again, you won't appear above people who are actually paying for it. So you won't be the, the top one or two, but you'll be the third or fourth down it, and it, it's very, very um, worthwhile doing. Um, there are, I've got a piece of paper here, because there are a few little, uh, few little extras I need to tell you about. Um, Google AdWords can be text ones that you see at the top of the search, or they can be the little annoying little um, you know, images that follow you around. So if you look for a pair of shoes, you suddenly go on another site and you find there's a little advert for a pair of shoes that keeps appearing and follows you around different websites. You won't get those, those image-based ones, but you'll get the text adverts. Um, as I said, they will appear below people who are actually paying. So if I'm advertising for something similar along with a similar search term that you're advertising for, yours will appear below mine, because then you know, it, it helps Google make more money, I should imagine. Um, you have to be quite specific in your keyword targeting. So when I say keywords, it might be something like the Vote Bodster might be your keyword. So if someone types in Vote Bodster on Google, You'll be one. Well, you will probably be the top result. I doubt any company will be competing against that. Um, there's a minimum cost. Uh, sorry, maximum cost that they'll let you. So, how AdWords works is how competitive an AdWord a word is. It costs diff it costs a different amount of money. So, a very competitive uh, um, ad word would be some like website developer. You'd be paying maybe sort of five to ten pounds a click for that. Um, something like Vogue Bolster, you'll probably be paying 10 to 15 pence a click for that. The maximum you can spend, certainly for the first period of time, is $2. So it's still, it's still a reasonable amount. 
So you're, you're sort of limited to how much you can outbid other companies for. Again, you can receive $10,000 a month. You don't have to spend it all, but it's a substantial amount of money you can blast at this uh, Google AdWords. There are a few caveats on how you, how you run the account. So it has to be reasonable, it has to be in order. Um, you have to be sending people to a website with, um, what do they call it, substantial content. So if you must, you must have a website that has what they term substantial content. Um, it needs to have a nice number of pages, it needs to be reasonable, it needs to be relevant. Relevant is very key. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you've got someone searching on a term and you're sending them somewhere irrelevant, that's nothing to do with the search term, Google won't like that and they'll stop you doing that. Um, any other little bits and pieces? Yeah, it's, it's open for all charities. Um, there is a question around CICs at the moment. For the people I'm working with, I'm saying apply and then appeal. Google haven't quite got their head around CICs. This is all driven out of the States, and I think it's a bit of a kind of, ooh, I'm not quite sure what those are yet. Um, so CICs, I'd just say apply and then appeal. Um, the charities are fine. If you're a charity, you can register. Um, if you want to get more information on it, you go to google.com slash grants, or if you actually just Google Google grants, it'll be one of the top top ones that appear. <laughs> Don't ignore the ads. It'll be one of the organic ones underneath it. Um, See, I manage probably about, um, about $600,000 worth of other people's money, but some, a lot of that is a charity, a charitable company, you know, uh, Google grant money that I manage. I've got a lot of experience in it, and if you have any questions on it, so when you come to applying, uh, the application process is on google.com slash grants. It's fairly easy to go through. Once it comes to setting it up, if you've got any questions, then feel, please feel free to get in contact with me. Simone has all my details, um, and if you search for Chris Court, C-O-U-R-T. I'm not probably not the top result because there's a photographer called Chris Court too. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be there and I'm on the Isle of Wight and you'll see me on the map. So uh, thank you very much. That's thank Google you. AdWords Grants. So the exciting bit that you've all been waiting for, how do I fill in my discovery grant form? What can and can I put in there and what shouldn't I put in there? So those there. On your chairs, you should all have a discovery grant form and a little fact sheet. This is your how-to guide, if you will. Um, the fact sheet does pretty much cover what's inside the booklet, but just if you wanted to keep this as a reminder for each time you send off a grant, you've got both there. So the form itself is pretty self-explanatory. You put your organisation name, contact details, registered charity number, um, well, yeah, your registered number, whether you're a charity, CIC or credit union, CIC for anyone who doesn't know, I'm sure you all do, but if you don't, it's a community interest company. So, working in the community, hence why we are willing to support you. Um, so, we've got three kind of key areas. We call them explorer, transformer and changemaker. Explorer means improving people's knowledge, so such as money management workshops, um, for disadvantaged people so they can learn how to budget. That would be an example of an Explorer grant. Transformer is improving skills and experience, so training to help socially isolated people develop their skills uh, to get back into work or volunteering opportunities, um, things like that. And Changemaker is an innovative solution to a social challenge. So, uh, for example, the example we give in our booklet, again, is a social networking programme for visually impaired people to be able to access the internet. That would count as a social, social changing um, option. So what can we or can't we fund? So things we, I'll start with the nots and then go on to the, the yeses for you. Um, so we cannot fund things such as medical equipment, research or palliative care. That's not something we're able to do, unfortunately. Uh, refurbishment of a building, ongoing running costs or marketing or website construction or awareness campaigns. Uh, trips and holidays are unfortunately out of bounds on these ones. And disability access, so we can't build a, a ramp or things like that. However, we can fund... I add this all written down. Um, mm -mm, complete projects. So if you've got, like Kim had, a series of workshops for a set amount of people and that's going to help build confidence and gain skills, we can fund that series of workshops because it's a complete project. Yeah, does that all make sense so far? Excellent. Um, we can also um, fund a part-time salary 
So again, with, with Joe, the, the most recent grant they've got is funded a part-time salary for someone to be there to work with the um, people and ponies um, because it's not necessarily a full-time option that's needed there, but the part-time salary, we've been able to provide that. Uh, the one thing I will say, um, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask him or I because we, we do put a lot of these through. We reapply for these each month, so if you drop these off into the branch, that's all the legwork you have to do. We then pick them up and every month we will reapply for them. If you don't get it one month, you may well get it the next. If you still don't get it that month, you may well get it the next. And we will keep plugging and plugging and plugging for you because they get that the team who evaluate these get thousands of them a month. And they only have a set budget, so they might look at one grant one month and go, we really want to give this, the 5,000 to them, but that means we can only give the two and a half there and then one and a half and the 500 there. Okay, so they go through. If your grant is 3,000, they might then, when we reapply for it, they'll look at it the next month and go, oh, do you know what? That's still a good application. We'll put that one through this month. So don't despair if you don't get it first time. We will keep applying for you each month and you will find out if you've got the grant because they notify you they let you know so you know then what the next steps are um, as regards getting hold of your funding and being able to start your project so yeah if you put an application through and it's not successful first time please don't panic or be disheartened we are on the case for you um, and if you want more information or you've got any questions part way through the process do feel free to um, either drop into branch and chat to either kim at ride or myself at here or um you know we're happy to give you our phone number as well we can always um because most of the time when you fill in this form i will phone you for more details because i'd like to give as much information as possible the more information you can provide the better chance your application has so if you want five thousand for example and that is because you want 500 pounds for for this and then a thousand for that and this is for this many hours worth of that because it's specific people can see why you're asking for that amount and they're more likely to go through because they've got the detail they can see the the rationale for that funding and therefore it's more likely to be successful so it's it's quite likely that one of us would phone you and say can you just talk me through this what give me a bit more de detail a bit more info and then that way we've got that, we keep hold of that and we can, like I say, keep applying for you. So I think that's about it. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Just to say, um, if you don't have time, like I said before, if you don't have time to do it now, take it away. If any of you know somebody that should have been here tonight or a charity that we might not have contacted, so if you know of somebody else that might benefit from this, please take the forms mm. and give it to them and just explain. Can I just ask, um, when you say on here your organisation is a charity, CIC or credit union. Yes. Um, one of the organisations that I work with is a community benefit organisation, which is a not-for-profit organisation. They've only been in existence for about two years. Um, and it's where a particular project could be um, taking out a village shop or the pub or, or whatever and turning it into a community, um, mm. something mm. for the community. Yeah. Yeah. And the community own the whole thing, so would that be eligible? Um, I think you'll find that falls under the credit union. Does um, it? Yeah, so we, we'd have to take clarification under that one. Yeah. But yes, um, if it's something that is run, I think there is a shop out at Sea View. Yes, that's that is yeah. a and, it, and for our point of view, it's deemed to be a credit union. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so that's what they would count <laughs> as. as regards. <laughs> we don't give loans. <laughs> so um, yeah, so if anybody's got any of uh, that, that type of uh, community uh, mm. business or um, yeah, um, run it past us first. Um, mm. We'll double check, but I think you'll find that they they come under the credit union. Yeah, lovely. Mm -hmm. So you can just relax now and. Like forms. Oh, anybody have any other questions? Yeah. Well, I was just going to run through a few bits and pieces. Obviously, I am the business relationship manager here, so I don't just deal purely and simply with profitable businesses um, or, or people making money. I deal with community interest CICs, um, charities, trusts. Um, so we do offer a treasurer's account that is um, free to non profit making company, uh, companies and charities. 
Um, so if any of you currently struggling at the moment, perhaps with your existing provider who may be charging you or perhaps not have a um, sort of account that you want, um, feel free to come and have a chat with me. Okay. Can I just ask yeah, a question? I don't know if people would be interested, but what evaluation or report you require at the end of the project? Do you want me to tell you? Because we've done one. <laughs> it's really, really, really easy. Um, it's a very easy one. Uh, basically, obviously they want to know that you've used the money in the way you've said you're going to use the money. Um, and then basically they're keen to see sort of if possible, visual examples of what you've done um, and a small little report. But it's not a very, very long detailed one. Um, neither do they seem to need you to go into great depths of like, you know, keeping receipts and so forth, mm -hmm. unless you've got something that's over, um, I think it was £200 or something, a certain mm -hmm. amount. Yeah. yeah. So obviously for that sort of thing, you have to. But for most of it, it's a very simple, easy mm -hmm. evaluation. Which again, when you know what it's like, some of the evaluations you have to do and so forth, it's nice to know. So, thank you. Oh, <laughs> That's what I say. I think there's just a final thing from myself. Obviously, we've kind of gone through a bit how to apply for grants with us. Every banking institution has a social responsibility. So, hopefully, with how simple our um, application process is, you should be able to apply this to other banks as well, should you wish to apply for funding from them it's not this isn't something that's exclusively for Santander customers this is for anybody in who does community based work so um, that's why we obviously invited you all because um, yeah it's not purely for Santander customers and they're for <coughs> other banking institutions as well it's not purely for their customers that they do social um, social funding as well so it's always worth having a look around and see what what else you can gain and benefit um, as well for, for your various different charities and causes. So now you can chill out. Yeah, so <laughs> relax, enjoy, have more snacks and meat because otherwise we'll be forced to eat it all tomorrow. <laughs> and we're all on diet. So thank you very much. More, for yeah, in. thank you. There's thank lots you. more tea and coffee and juice and stuff. So help yourself to food and, and talk amongst yourselves and, and learn from each other as to what you do. Yeah. Um,